I'm Gwen Douglas. I'm Emily Harmon. In today's episode, we're doing skin contact. Well, skin contact aromatics. So a special kind of skin contact. Yes. <laughs> and, <laughs> and surprisingly, I didn't bring a Gavroche trimmer. I know, I'm shocked. And I almost did bring one. I should have done that. It would have been a bit now more Now we're in like Gavroche trimmer aversion <laughs> <I> tactics. <know. laughs> we're like trying not to be too obvious. <laughs> I know. Because this would have been the episode where I should have brought one, but... Here we are. Well, I also know that you said you wanted to do another Kaberts Shamina, well, a Kaberts Shamina Revisited. Right. So maybe I was saving all my wild cards for that. Yeah, maybe. Maybe there'll be a whole range. It'll be like an hour long <laughs> right. episode. So we actually ended up bringing things with... Yeah, I think... Some similar grapes? Or... Yes. 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 Yeah. Um, so I think maybe because we're just starting... Um, Again, had a little... It's our first sort of skin contact episode of the season. It's good to maybe yeah. revisit what that means. So what's skin contact? What is skin contact? So skin contact, would you like to ask? All right. So skin contact is, I guess, once it's been smushed and put in the, wherever it's living, in either a tank or a, wherever you would crush your wine, then it lays on the skin for a while. They can noodle. In they, can, they can noodle. <laughs> They can noodle, and in that in that time, the liquid gets flavor from the skin. So a little bitterness, maybe some more of the like tannins, some yeah. taste, some different profiles that you will get from just running the juice off. So whenever we talk about skin contact wines, we're talking about white grapes or green grapes. Right. Because red one. always has some skin contact. Yeah. Um, so that's the first thing to know is that actually we can call it orange wine. It's also known as amber wine. Um, or skin contact white wine, essentially. Right. Um, just depends how you decide to label it. Right. We're, so we're dealing with white grapes where we're keeping the skins in contact with the juice. So what that means is we're extracting tannin, flavour and colour um, in the same way that we do with red. So they look a little bit different. As you can see, this bottle here is like completely clear, clear which means that we can see the colour. The, sort of, the colour and the haziness as well. Um, obviously a lot darker than, than the average white wine that you would see. I love skin contact wine, uh, particularly for aromatics. And I think actually yeah. that this is where skin contact does best. Like shines. I yeah. I think so too. Yeah. Because of all of those aromatic compounds are already in the, in the white grapes. And we're just able to emphasise it with right. the time on skins. And what I really enjoy as well is the contrast between how the wine smells, very aromatic, quite overblown. Versus how it tastes. And then very dry. Yeah. Like it, it's actually, um, I think, a little bit more curious. I also think it's part of the yeah. pleasure of drinking them, where you're sort yeah. of like br drawn in with the perfume and then totally brings you somewhere else and they're more drinkable things. then because you've got this tannin they have a little bit more flexibility with food yeah, yeah, totally. um yeah i think mm, well i think we should just open mine open, open, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm gonna open mine first because i think it's it's a little bit difficult to choose hard, let's just open them both and then we see what happens let me pull out the old trusty and you're actually going to attempt to use it this time the type opener <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> the Tyco Gallery opener has become the Tyco opener. <laughs> but I don't As have we already know, when. <laughs> so, what do I have to use my teeth or something? This is really like just have the end of this. Yeah, I'm right. gonna do that properly. I might do myself. I'm injury. wondering, yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking. Is it oh, I'm just gonna it? destroy the capsule. Don't do this at well, this home. Is, I was yes. gonna say, this is quite a good lesson of how not to open a bottle of wine don't if you're trying to impress do. anybody. Don't have this opener to begin with, so I think I'd, I'd rather. I reckon the whole <laughs> the whole already. capsule should let like go. Off. This whole thing is a disaster. Oh wow. Okay. I would just slip so the whole your, thing about. Just keep your eyes on Emily as she opens hers, and we're gonna try and do something with this. <laughs> what a mess, dear oh dear. I was like, thought maybe I could do something with it, like it was a knife, but that was a horrible. I mean, I would never. I have a really nice opener at home. I need a better opener for the studio. This is a mess. And we need to taste the wine first, hopefully. Hopefully, we're all good. I had a out. bottle of this last week, and it was delicious, but I didn't open it. Someone else did. So. <laughs> Your face while I. Me, me. I know. It's like a. It's like yeah. Uh, no, psycho. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How does the cork smell? Good. 
this one as well. Yeah, and, and if I was really trying to, oh, you've kind of saved it actually, well done. Yeah, take it all back. To the best I could in it. She's, oh, thank God. Oh, Lord, Lord. Mm. Maybe, well, let's, mm. let's just quickly taste quick both and make a decision. And what would be your deciding factor in, in terms of like... Which one would we serve yeah. first? Which one's lighter? Mm, it smells delicious. I haven't had this in a while, but I remember loving it. Mm. No. Yeah, we need to try yours first. It's a bit sweeter, if I remember rightly. Mm. Or more air. Oh, I don't know, actually. Because this one is quite light. This is light. This is 11% alcohol. But and it's also a bit more light. tannic. So we should have that after. Alright. We've yeah. made a decision. It's difficult. I don't think we could have messed it up either way, actually. I think they're like, oh, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm pouring you my wine. Uh, so I purchased this at Vini Couture, actually, here in Berlin. It's also widely available in the UK, many different places. I've bought it. I love it. Good I choice. think we've got this on by the glass actually at um, Marito Hackney at the moment, or no, sorry, Marito Exmouth Market by the glass. But um, yeah, so this is Vinicens Tragolago 2018. It's important to know that they make uh, more than one wine that's called Tragolago, so they also produce a red. So it's quite yes. nice to know that if you were ordering it online, check that you're getting the orange right. or slash the skin contact white. It does say on the back that it's a white wine. It smells really lovely, this one. So this is quite, I followed this one for a while and it's now taken on a slightly different form because it was originally, um, so Vinicens bought uh, the vineyards of quite a famous natural producer from Spain called Rafa Bernabe or Rafael yeah, Bernabe. Um, yeah, and, and, and Rafa was producing, I thought, some of the, the most exciting natural wines in Spain, sometimes to the point where they were a bit challenging for some people because they were a little bit on the edge, but... They had a very clear identity, or at least you could see his fingerprint in, right. in all of the wines that he was producing. So this wine originally um, would have been called, I think it would have been the El Caro Moscatel when Rafa made it. because of, And then there was another cuvee that he was making that was a blend of Moscatel and a local grape variety called Merceguera. And then when we talked about it and I was like, no, I bought I a thought bottle it was of Malvasia. Yeah, which is a surprise. So I don't think the Malvasia... It's from his vineyards. I think there must be or a, a, a different vineyard. Because this um, is what attracted me to this bottle because I like aromatics and then I also love Malvasia. Yeah. Uh, so, but this is predominantly uh, Moscatel. 70% yeah. Moscatel, 30% Malvasia. 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 Yeah. Malvasia. Yeah. So coming from Alicante, down in the south, the vineyards from Rafa. Obviously, I don't know about the Malvasia, so I can't comment on that completely, but I know... With his Moscatel vineyards, they were all um, pre phylloxera vines, or there was a lot of pre phylloxera vines because okay. of the sandy soil. Mm -hmm. Very, a couple of kilometers from the coast, so always this lovely, cool, breeze. drying breeze, so it's quite easier, or a lot easier, to make um, more natural wines without using lots of chemicals. Right, because everything is great to dry. Yes, exactly. um, and yeah, I mean, this is unfined, unfiltered, and the Moscatel here has. Uh, 40, sorry, 24 days on skins. Funny, yeah. And the Malva a... Malvasia, nothing. Yeah. They just let it uh, macerate with the skins for, for 24 hours. My experience with fermentation. Malvasia and Malvasia is that it tends to be quite orange when it's skin contact. But it has yeah, a I mean, I don't... Color. I don't know why, I mean, I assume, I would assume with this blend, so the 70% of Moscatel, that's been on skins. Right. So I'm assuming that they've done that because... Um, to extract all those right, aromatics right. and then the Malvasia for the weight and the texture yeah. not needing to extract no. too much more and yeah 48 sorry I said 24 before but it's actually 48 hours just a cold maceration okay. before fermentation starts then after this 24 24 days of uh, skin contact for the Moscatel the two great varieties are blended then yeah yeah, yeah. But I, mean, I think this is a great entry level. Oh, totally. Maybe entry level is the wrong word, but I think this is a great wine um, easy, as an access point for people totally. to try orange wine. Because I think it orange smells skin contact. delightful. Yeah. Because a really nice, like, I think it's this really nice mix of it being perfumed and aromatic, but then there's this nice little, like, crunchy bite at the end where you're like, it's not 
you get to enjoy, it's like eating sweets with no sugar. Well, it's the contrast again that I mentioned chocolate. before. So this pretty, floral, aromatic, slightly tropical, exotic edge totally. to it. And then almost it's like super nice and dry. And, yeah. yeah. Really and easy to drink. Almost salty on palate. Yeah. yeah, really nice. Yeah, it's like eating candy without any of the guilt. And what's quite interesting about this one in particular as well is, obviously it's darker than the average white wine, but it's got more of this sort of yellow colour, so they don't all have to take on a very no, deep no. amber Yeah, because I don't think colour. this is like necessarily that orange. No. I think you could probably serve this to someone. Breakfast else. juice. Oh my god, yes. So other, I know we've, we've got two uh, wines actually working around Muscat today. Other varietals that I really love, Sauvignon Blanc for me. Is I think actually Sauvignon Blanc on skins is way better than normal Sauvignon Blanc. I just haven't had that much Sauvignon on skins. But Rifo you like. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And remember okay. the one oh, you blinded guess... me on? Oh, I guess I always... still hurts today. I guess oh. I forget that it's a skin that it's Sauvignon because yeah. I always think of the Sophie Four wines as just being their own beautiful thing. Because who else is making a skin contact Sauvignon? Um, my favourite skin con contact Sauvignon is actually an Australian winemaker oh, who's really? based in the Barossa. His name's Tom Shobrook. He's a oh. dear friend of mine. Did I and meet him? You haven't no, met him yet, else, but yeah. you will meet him at some point, I'm yeah. sure. Um, I did harvest well, with him in 2011. But it's not that big, actually. Really? It's, like, uh, it's almost like this joyful grapefruit juice. Oh, cool. Like it's, mm. The colour's like this, and it's just fresh and grapefruity mm -hmm. and very... Uh, drinkable, like the tannins are so yeah. fine, and he does about three weeks, or at least it was four, three weeks for some of the older cubes that I was familiar with. Oh, delicious. And it's called Giallo, the Italian word for yellow. Oh, lovely. And in a clear bottle, so delicious. Because I would think, is there another, does, um, what's his name? From? But there's quite a lot of people yeah. in Oz doing some skin contact serving on yeah, now, and I'm sure they kind of, I mean, yeah. Tom was one of the first, and then actually there's a lot of people doing it, and it's a very interesting, yeah. delicious style. I have to say that that's one of the things that, like, we don't get a lot of, you know, so many restaurant menus are kind of the same, same in Europe, where everywhere yeah. you go, the nice high-end restaurants are the same. So when I went to... Bo Clarkson's place in Iluka. Iluka. They had a really nice list with a lot of actually um, Australian wines and wines that you don't normally see around. Yeah, it's and really I think nice. that's maybe because he is Australian. Because he's Aussie, but it was really nice yeah. to see some interesting natural wines from Australia on that list. And when I was, was exciting. I mean, when I was doing um, the list for the Zetter in, in London, we, we had a lot of, like, I actively sought out Australian wines because of I'd obviously just moved back from right. Australia at the time and I'd been working at Attica. So I had, I was so lucky to have worked at that restaurant to have access to all yeah. these really exciting wines. That's how I met Tom. And now it's funny because I go back to Australia at least, or I try to at least once a year. And now the wine scene there is absolutely Crazy. off the chart. Like there's so many people experimenting with exciting things. It'd be, it's a bit of a shame that um, there aren't enough of the wines here in yeah, Germany. Hendrik Thoman's one of the only people really importing. Importing. Yeah, yeah he's just taken on. There's a Downing. natural wine metal bar in Sydney. Sounds amazing. Like a friend of, a friend of mine who's a tattooer was texted me a few months ago saying. Hey, I found this crazy natural wine bar in Sydney, and it's a metal bar. Do they like metal? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so it was perfect. Talk. Yeah, it was like he loves natural wine. And it's funny because wine. actually, there's a a big um, bikey culture. Totally in Sydney, in Australia. Australia. Yeah. yeah, like I I would love to see like people like in their leathers and their colours like going in like the get the bikey <laughs> games going in and like smashing a pet nut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> drinking a, yeah, exactly, and drinking a bottle of Rifo, so yeah, it's on set. It. It'd be incredible. That shit is punk rock. I love it. Yeah, Get it's, it. it is. It's the modern day, the hipster punk rock. I think maybe. I like it because it's sort of taking back what was always regarded as something super bougie, and being able to saying like, "Man, I can drink this. I know this. I can afford it. I like it." Yeah, you're not giving a fuck. It's good. And I'll listen to the music that I yes. love to listen to. Totally. I really like. I like the, actually the more I drink it, the the salinity comes through at the end. It really makes it like Moorish. Yes. And I want to drink it on a hot summer's day and I would smash this bottle if it was like super hot when we were laying around. Because you'd be like, drink it before it gets warm. So that was my next point actually that I was going to bring up because of temperature. So I took these out of the fridge about half an hour before we started, maybe a little bit longer because someone was chatting. <laughs> and <laughs> Oops. 
you can guess who it was <laughs> but um <laughs> i took them out the fridge and i actually think uh so now this temperature i'm guessing would be a, somewhere between 12 and 14 yes. degrees so we're starting at it like these are definitely wines i think that you have to drink cold i disagree with really? that Oh, I like yeah, that. Yeah, that was. I was about to. I was like, "Come no, on, no!" Because I, I was think like that like, there's an it. edge for me where it's like yeah. when they can go from being delicious to flabby for me sometimes. Yeah, but this won't. Like, it's like this well, won't because it's not. It's thirteen percent. But I'm saying some of the aromatics. I don't want to drink them when they're warm. Mm. Maybe they're more flavorful. But if I'm thinking of like this one is bringing me to a I beach, think, I don't want to drink it warm. Yeah, but this is like tw this is like white burgundy temperature. It's lovely. So this is okay for you then. Mm -hmm. Okay. I would say any warmer, I'm already upset. I'd be like, can we okay. make it colder? Yeah. I love it at least this like. You're right. This temperature. temperature. Yeah. yeah. So I think at least twelve degrees. Treat it a little bit, or I would go up to fifteen, sixteen. I guess because everything like comes out more, and there's so much more to, like, flavor. Right. And you also have to remember that the colder this is, the more you're going to feel the tannins, right. because all the flavors right. going to lock down. It's the same. Th you know, think about it if you're just thinking about your tomatoes, you keep them yeah. in the fridge, they lose all their flavor. I never keep them, yeah. I guess this is maybe, maybe the way I'm, maybe I misrepresent, I mean it's a tightrope act to keep it the right temperature. Right temperature, I agree. That's maybe more how I'm feeling, yeah. where it's like, I don't like them when they get too warm, because then it's like, ugh, it's a struggle for me. Do you know what I would do, minutes? if you're feeling like you can never quite get the balance right, is I would have a little, ha a little decanter nearby, if you don't have a decanter, with this particular wine, obviously ones that are low salt, but oh, they've got skin contact, they should be stable. But let's just say for um, wines that you know that can stay open right. for a few days, I would put them in a put it in a decanter. If you don't have a decanter, just like a jug will do. Yeah, like if you just water have a, jug, yes. a water jug, a, a water jug. carafe, anything yeah. like that, a big vessel, you know, even something like this would be fine. And um, I would I would put it in there. One, it's going to get a bit of air, which is going to just help it open yeah. up. Two, the temperature will raise quickly. So if you've just okay. taken it out of the fridge, you've forgotten to and change it out quick, earlier. Like, okay. Quick there, the temperature will come up quicker because of um, because of it will just it will. And then because <laughs> that's what I was like, oh, that's getting too excited. I'm like, I need to get to the end of the story. Yeah, no. So it would uh, because of there is uh, the the jug or the carafe is warmer than the bottle yes, itself. It will just yeah. warm up quicker. And then have a bucket of ice on the side. So you, if you feel, you toss it in the ice it'll bucket. cool down quicker okay. as well in a decanter you know, water, yeah, or okay. a water jug. Obviously, if you've got a very thick a good water tip. jug, forget it. Plastic Easy. will be very, very quick. Yeah, that's a good, um, that's a good yeah. point. Because I, I do think that like these, when they get warm, I'm not that interested in them. They become okay. a bit of a struggle for me. It's a tight effect. But you're right, this white burgundy temperature is very nice right now. I mean, equally, I mean, drink the wine how you want to drink it. That's only my advice. Get it in your face. I know you're not going to listen to it, but maybe someone else <laughs> will. We're all going to do whatever She's just there, like the bottle of Gewurz Schramina, like she's in a bathtub full of ice, Gewurz Schramina. I like everywhere. that she's the first one to mention Gewurz Schramina. You mentioned it yeah. first today. <laughs> True. Uh, what are the other aromatic grapes we said? Sauvignon? Sauvignon, obviously Gewurz, Stramina. Uh, Pinot Gris as well does quite good on skin. I think skins. I always forget that it's like a... Or is it just a it's good aromatic. skin? It is an aromatic. Yeah. I always forget about Pinot Gris. Yeah, because if everybody makes Pinot Gris, you know, it tastes rubbish. Like, it's yeah. like watery, nothing. Exactly. But Pinot Gris can be quite floral, and actually it's a great variety that benefits from a bit of skin contact. And it's very interesting with skin contact, because oh, cool. it takes on this almost like Pinot Noir yeah, character. Oh, really? Well, in terms of colour, yeah, okay. Right? Oh. So it's got this lovely pink, almost light yeah, red. It's kind of a blush grape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I think Pinot Gris, um, Riesling on skins. I don't That's know happening more and more. Yes, yeah, I was going to say. Oh, right? I should have bought Sibylla Kuntz. Oh, well, yeah, we, we did her. We, yeah, we did, did an episode on her. Yeah, we did. <laughs> just a second. We did an episode on her last year and it was really delicious. Yeah. Um, um, whenever I see her wine so I definitely like scoop them up because I think yeah so she nice. does um, uh, one with an orange label that one I love Riesling on skins and actually so it's lovely good. Uh, Clemens Bush also does a Riesling on skins um, and it's very very subtle actually and I think I don't know any super super extreme Riesling on skins yet Muller Turgau is the other great fruit okay. variety I love Schmidt, like Daniel yes. and Bianca Schmidt they're making some amazing skin pressure. contact wines everything is so drinky from them it's yeah. like the best barbecue, beach, hangout, it's like the go-to for any quick 
Well, the magnums that they make. The magnums are phenomenal. Just like they evaporate. The pricing is so good on them. Yeah. It's like the great party. Yeah. I think it's like Mosa, Magic of Juju, and a magnum. And then, Mose, yeah. and then the Mulder Togao by Schmidt are like my two go to magnums for a party. That's quite good. Because they're like, what? Yeah, I've never been at your house when you. Oh, no, there was a Schmidt magnum. Yes. Rufus. I think it was a no, double, was a magnum. double <laughs> magnum, even. We went yeah. all. He went balls yeah. to the wall that time. Balls. <laughs> Magnum. <laughs> okay. And he was pouring it from like the same height as that, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so Miller gal definitely recently. We should do a Miller Turgau episode. We should. I think that's a kind of unknown grape that outside of Germany. Yeah. Doesn't we should get so much attention. And Della and Mole also um, are producing a great Miller Turgau, which is with skin contact, contact, which is really good. Mm. So I'm, I'm actually, I don't usually like Muller Turgau, but when it's on skins, I yeah, love it. Yeah, it's really nice. Because it's a bit like Sauvignon on skins, like it takes on more of this uh, citrusy, grapefruity, yes. uh, but then sort of the floral yeah, bit comes out. I don't know, it integrates much better. Yeah. Trying to think, what else? What other, uh, there must be some Spanish, like, um, aromatics, Alvarino, is that an aromatic? Um, Alvarino, there's not as much orange Alvarino, but there are a few people playing okay. around with that now. Because that is an aromatic. Yeah, I, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah for way. sure. Um, what else would I think? Is there any other skin contacts that are aromatic? The the one that really comes to mind for me is um, is Frilano from mm. uh, Friuli, yeah, which is used to be called Tokai Frilano now because obviously the region yeah. in Hungary called Tokai can no longer be called Tokai. So a lot of the producers, so the same a lot of the producers like reverse the name, ah. so that's why it's called Yakot. Oh wow! And that's like a quite a tropical exotic grape variety. Is it made the same way as? No, it has nothing to nothing do to with do the it. Tokai okay. in Hungary. But for some reason, the grape variety it was a slight different spelling. So it was T O C A I Tokai oh. Frulano. So I remember when I first started working at the River Cafe, two thousand eight, two thousand nine, seeing these Tokai Frulano wines yeah. on the menu, and now it's called Frulano because they okay, can't get rid of the brand in Hungary, which yeah. is a sweet and dry right. wine from the region of Tokai. Right, exactly. um, but now. Frulano is the, is the great variety, which a lot of the more natty guys, like Turpin, and I think Radicon also calls it Yakot as well. Really? Oh, now I know. That's yeah. interesting to know that that's yeah, yeah. why they call it that. Yeah. Cool. Because it's the reversed word, so it's just a way of playing around with it. So that's the other one that you see on skins, I think. Any others? The This is an exception to the rule, though. Okay. Is... Um, the Manzoni Bianco from Foradori. That's very aromatic, but it's very indigenous and quite lovely okay. and great. Um, that's so cool. It still counts. But yeah, that's it still cool. counts just because he's a B side or a. Not a B side. Underdog. Not a B side. A, a rare gem. Yeah. But yeah, so lots of interesting. What are you? What would you eat with this? I thought you were about to say, "What will you drink with this?" Like no more skin contact wine for you. Uh, what would I drink with this? I would. I, have an idea. I think. Okay, tell me. Lucas makes a really delicious salad with tomatoes and grilled peaches. Ooh. That's kind of like a French, you know, like cheese and peach, and I think that would be nice with it. Like he makes it this because I think there's enough acidity for this salad, and the peaches are nice. Be good. Okay, so fruit. Some mozzarella, fruit. Yeah, an orson okay. feta. Some fruit, like something a bit savory, but also a bit sweet. It could do a grill, maybe some shrimp. Maybe some shrimp. What about papaya salad? Yes. <gasps> oh, that's also a Luki favorite. Mm -hmm. We're in Lucas territory right now. I think because of we've got um, nice acidity here. Totally. The aromatic thing with the aromatic Thai flavors. It would totally be enough fruit that, yeah. with the spice, and it's not, and not too so tannic. tannic. Exactly. Yeah. Could get away with. Yeah, I think that delicious. would be quite good. Oh, I like this pairing. I was also thinking today, I was very close to ordering some fried chicken, so I was actually thinking fried chicken with this sort of stuff yeah. would be really interesting to, to eat. Totally, because it's kind of like when we did the fried chicken episode with the Chenin. Yeah, oh, do you know what? Kebab. Mmm. Yeah. But Turkish spicy, food, spicy Middle Eastern kebab. food. Middle Eastern, think of like Middle Eastern food with all the spices, like yeah, Totally. It can kind of get a, because it can move around it. It's not so one-sided, you know? It, it, it's a little shapeshifter. And you know what else I'd say? Tajine. <laughs> yes. But do you know which tajine I would put 
Think of the beef one with the no, chicken, the preserved oh, lemon, lemon and chicken. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that'd be off the wall delicious. So, are you saying that we should bring some of these to Morocco for your birthday? Yeah. Every year. <laughs> yes. On the list. Cool. Mm. Well, I really love this one. I've got this a few times. We need to bring some Schmidt Magnums, actually. That'd yes, be amazing. Double Magnum. Yeah. Mm. Delicious. It's, it's actually been a few months. I forgot yeah. how good that was. It's delicious, isn't yeah. it? It's really yum. Can I? Oh, please. There's a lot more color on this. It's yeah. almost like a high. I mean, it's. It's like iodine. Mm. Like, that's the color. It's beautiful, actually. It's got a like floral edge. The edge is so bright. Oh my god, it really smells of uh, homemade lemonade. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's really weird. It is a little strange. Yeah. Or like bitter lemon? Yeah. It kind of does Initially, remind... bitter lemon, like, you know, like the little Schweppes mixes? Yeah, totally. Quinine. I yeah, Quinine. I didn't get that before. I didn't get this also either before. So, what's here? But then it's weird. It's somewhere between bitter lemon Schweppes and orange marmalade. It is kind of reminding me a little bit of that turpin chardonnay. Mm. Maybe it's just the colour. No, it's just the colour. So, see, I'm visual. That's what's happening. You're not just visual, but um, so I asked you earlier on if you knew anything about wine, so I found out a few facts because Gwen just follows the news. I do. I don't know if this was the wine that I was thinking of the last time I, when we were talking about it earlier. It's crazy. It's almost like bergamot now. Yeah, it's a really uh, interesting... but like bergamot pith. It's very dry. I'm actually glad we had the other one first. No, I know. Yeah. So this definitely wasn't the one I was thinking of. We've had a lot of guests at the house and at the studio, so we've had a lot of evenings and a lot of bottles being opened with a large amount of people around, so I don't yeah. always get a chance to properly focus on what's coming around. And Jas or Jasse? I don't know, Jas. I'd well, say you've Jasse. Got to French it no, up. There's no accent on it, so it Jasse. Just be Jasse. Okay, so this is 2016 Jasse from Domaine Gobi. So Gobi uh, getting well, getting, have had for quite a long time a very um, good reputation, one of the top producers in the Roussillon. So this is on from Côte Catalan, Côte Catalan. so that bit of coastline just above Spain, where it's sort of the blend between French and Spain, or French and Spain, France and Spain. Um, and the blurred line. Yeah, so the winemaker, Gérard Gobi, was the winemaker at La Sula, Oh really? Years. Yeah, oh, and I love a Lasula. Lasula is my yeah. one of my all-time favorite too. wines, particularly the white. And uh, yeah, so Gobi family, Gerard Gobi, he took over the domain in '85. It's 40, forty hectares in total. A lot of the vineyards are, are very old, up to and over a hundred years. Wow. So good quality fruit, um, and I believe it will be quite similar to Lasula, or I'm assuming it is, where there's little pockets of. Okay of really good sort of granitic soil and different bits so this lovely freshness come into the wines and this is a blend of uh two different types of muscat yes muscat so muscat petit grain and muscat de alexandria right i've really bastardized that no i think it's fine you can french it up if you like muscat de alexandria yeah i mean it's not that different <laughs> i had a bit of wine on it's it it's massively different <laughs> What's interesting about this? It's not that aromatic on the nose. And it's only 15 days on skins. It really has a really interesting smell. Yeah. I'm actually having a... I mean, you've given some good notes here, but I'm... There's something like... There is something a bit medicinal about the smell. Mm. On the palate, a bit drier. Much drier. Where it like medium, medium plus tannin. It's a lot tannic. Yes. A lot more tannic, sorry. Um, the tannins are definitely firmer. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more of them. I would say um, maybe slightly finer. This is a wine actually that maybe needs a little bit more time. Age. Yeah. Because it's quite, it's funny because the t the flavour is quite light and then it's like, has that little It's almost it. like if you imagine eating a piece of chalk and biting into a citrus fruit at the same time. <laughs> Gotcha. The sensation yeah. of like the acidity and the dryness and the dryness. Yeah, I mean it's not unpleasant, but I think this is something that I'd be curious to to try it with food. I, mean, I don't know what I would eat with this yet. 
But I have a feeling there's like something that's gonna make it this sparkle, you know. Yeah. I mean high acid foods, high acid foods, fresher foods, but not anything um fishy because there's quite no, a lot of tannin. So, yeah, 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 yeah. You'd be like just fished out. You know what? Like even as a contrast to like if you had something Maybe the salad I, I thought thought it would work better with this one. I think with the peaches it would make this wine feel more yeah, I dry. Think so. And also like no, no, I think this would make this more, wine dry. Feel more dry. Really? Mm. Yeah. I'm really like at a loss for this one. What I would eat with it. I mean some protein would definitely help. A little Spark piece of here. meat or something, yeah. But nothing too spicy. Some grilled fish. Yeah. Grilled pork. Like grilled white fish though. Yeah. So um, and white meat. So like grilled white meat. Yeah, or um I'm trying to think of a dish. I mean, I want to go down the Middle Eastern track again, though. I know, but I don't. I think it's too dry for that. Maybe. But if you had like oh, something with some like tahini a, or something. Yeah, I was gonna say maybe like a patouche salad with sumac. I was gonna say like a my chicken with sumac, pine sure. nuts, yes. and onion. I was gonna That'd say great. like a grilled uh, cauliflower covered in like tahini and yeah. other stuff. But there's like a roastiness and like you can yes. put tons of like roasted nuts on top and. It's a shame we don't have a snack. <laughs> you know what I thought I about. Know. It's funny because I talked about snacks for about 30 minutes earlier. We do have a Pringle in the that's back. What I, that's I why know. I stopped. I think we should eat one quickly. All right. Oh, Emma, I'll go oh, grab a Pringle. Yeah. All right. I might have to like cover them. Mm. Right, we can't just eat the Pringles and enjoy them. We have to like drink the wine and enjoy it. I mean, it does help. The tannins do seem softer. I mm -hmm. think it's really important actually. Do something salty in them? Or just something fatty? I would go fattier than this. I think it's just mm -hmm. good to taste it when totally. because it helps to like actually tame down those tannins a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I think that's what everybody needs to remember is that when we're trying totally. to contact wines, that sometimes they don't make sense without food. Mm -hmm. And this one, I would particularly say, unless you're, um, if you're a bit of a novice, then please try these wines with food. Mm -hmm. You know, if you've been around the block and you know what you're getting yourself in for, then of course, you're gonna go for it. But even for me, I love skin contact wine, uh, or skin contact wipes, and uh, this particular one, I think it does need. It definitely it needs food. food. I don't think too much. much. One, yeah, yeah, even like sure. Italian antipasti would be yeah. quite nice. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. I expected it to be more intense. Totally. More aromatic and sort of more overblown than the one before. But that's just this will be the worst though. wine for a hangover. Yes. Acid reflux. <laughs> so I mean, I've had a couple of moments where I've been hungover and ended up somewhere, and someone who works in wine is like, I know what we're going to have. We're going to have this crazy skin contact orange, and you're like, mm. I'm dying. It's like the last thing you want to drink at brunch is a super tannic orange wine that's yeah. drying you out. You're already like dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas now, actually, it's quite nice. Actually, the more I'm going back to it, I'm getting all these different... I feel like it's the full spectrum of citrus going on. It's almost limey. Mm -hmm. There's the lemony thing going on. There's like this little like burger lime. Mm. Bergamot lift. Mm -hmm. Or a little totally. orangey. Actually, it's really... There is something floral going on. Actually, with the Pringles, you do kind of notice that there's like... Yeah, you, and the wine's softer. So yeah, I think... Totally. Maybe this actually is the pairing for the lemon and chicken tagine. Yes. Oh, yes. And olive. Maybe we need to try this out, we need to revisit it. Yeah. Because I think, actually, I think it would do really well with an olive. Yeah. An olive and some lemon and some white totally. meat. Totally. Mm. Mm, yum. There we go. It's funny just, having that just little Just cooked tagine, skin contact aromatics, you really mm. can't make a mess of it. Yep. Perfect. Well, that was great. Um, anything else to say? No. I mean, get your Pringle on or whatever salty snack you want to... <laughs> Eat with the slightly more tannic skin contact one. Yeah. This one, you don't need any snacks. You can just go for it. 
I think we'll definitely revisit this over the next, uh, well, maybe not over the next few episodes, but over this, in this series, we'll revisit. Yeah, because I actually skin think Skin contact that, like, aromatics. I think it's good. We'll maybe do a, I think it'd be good to go on. Actually, maybe we should do like, a, you know, this one has been sort of a Muscatel wrap. So maybe we need to do a Sauvignon episode. Try some different, do them individually. Yes. Instead of like as a mix. Because I think okay. they are pretty different. Yeah. Sounds good. And even this is like actually kind of opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of skin contact mm. for aromatics. Mm. Well, do you have a favorite aromatic? <laughs> Tell us your favorite aromatics. Yes. Tell, Tell us um, your favorite skin contact wine. Favorite skin contact wines. Uh, Tell us what you're eating with them. Hopefully it's better than a Pringle. <laughs> yeah. No, it's embarrassing. So, um, yeah, thank you for tuning in and join us next week. But until then, find us on Instagram at juice.podcast and on Twitter at juice underscore podcast and online at juice.show where you can find yourself one of these beautiful tote bags here pictured in the video. Which carries like eight bottles of wine, so it's well worth the investment. Oh, it's <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> and uh, otherwise, you see you next week. I'm Gwen Douglas. I'm Emily Harmon. Cheers. Thank you.